The Architect Paris is a game I've been looking forward to playing for nearly three years now. In the exclusive info video I released a few weeks back, cue the video in the top right corner, I talked about how the game has drastically changed from its initial pitch of an in-depth economic architectural focused city builder to a much simpler city designer where it's just about creating with no consequences, something along the lines of Town Scraper. In this review, I'll go over the basic ideas of the game, what you get with early access, how having no imperative or end goal affects the game, and what to look forward to in the future, all in an effort to help you, the community, determine if this game is for you. Before I do, a quick little personal ad to let you know that YouTube is not the only platform where you'll find me. I stream twice a week over on Twitch from 7am to 12pm Central Standard Time, where you'll find me playing various strategy games, from the Paradox and Total War franchises to indie games and even The Architect Paris. Check out the link on the screen or find it in the description, and I hope to see you there in the next stream. Back to the review, let's dive in. The premise of The Architect Paris is simple. You are the designer, the engineer, the architect. Paris is your playground. Comprised of several dozen districts, you are able to load into a district and edit nearly any block that is currently standing. There are no limitations. Money might as well not exist. It's quite literally up to you and your imagination in this creative construction simulator. Helping you craft your own customized Paris are two tools, your builder and your plot editor. The builder is your building designer tool. Selecting any building within a block will bring up a whole series of building designs. These designs range from buildings, parks, plazas to parking lots, which can then be further filtered by design types, emphasizing trends like people-focused or planet awareness-focused, and even architectural schools like classic, modern, or contemporary. From there, it's up to the player on how many floors, what type of rooftops, and materials of said rooftops, among other such types of customization. The mix matching is nearly endless and gives plenty of ability to play around with different styles. Since there is nothing to really hold you back, you can theme entire blocks or districts, or you can quite literally jumble a whole bunch of mismatched designs together just for the sake of doing them. The customization right off the bat is crazy, and there is sure to be some aspect of design in the game for every type of player. If not, well, we'll address that later in the video. The other tool is your plot editor, and it's just as important to your city building as the actual building designer. The plot editor allows the player to determine the makeup of the block that has been selected. Within this editor, you can draw custom shapes, any number of shapes, and how they piece together. Each plot you create in this editor has the ability to turn into any of the building designs over on the building designer tool, giving a bit more life to your city blocks since buildings will not always look the exact same, even if they are the same design. If your block is too crowded, just destroy it all and only draft up a few buildings. Or you could take an entire block, regardless of size, and turn it into a giant park, for instance. It's not outside of theory to just replace entire districts with parks if that's what you want to do. There are limitations to both the building designer and the plot editor. The biggest is that you cannot edit the size of the entire block you are editing. This means that roads and streets are always going to be unchanged, it's just the inside makeup of the block that can be modified. There are several key buildings throughout Paris, landmarks. Some can be modified with up to three different designs, but most remain completely untouchable to preserve the core of what makes Paris, well, Paris. With regards to design at this current stage, plazas have a very defined area and have a hard time conforming to anything but an actual rectangle. Parks with walkways are always randomized, which means that you often end up with jankily cut corners or on walkways or very abrupt endings that just look a bit funky, especially if your block is broken up into several pieces. These aren't deal breakers, but it does mean that I pretty much never use plazas because they just don't feel right currently. These are still two amazing tools that make up the core of the gameplay, and they did not disappoint me, especially for early access. I spent most of my preview time just crafting three to four blocks using both tools. Customization can be a bit overwhelming at first, but at the same time, absolutely awesome to have so many options at your fingertips. With multiple types of the same building, I love the idea of themed blocks, 
and being able to actually craft a unique block with various buildings that flow together is a very cool way to design your city. I've no doubt there are pure chaos minded people watching this video and the ability for you to just go design a block with 18 different designs that don't go together also has its appeal. I remain pretty impressed so far. It's important to remind everyone that this is indeed an early access game despite being developed for three years. That no doubt always has a cause for concern with many gamers, so I wanted to lay out what all we get with the immediate early access release of The Architect Paris. First, districts. With, I believe, 80 districts in total for the final release of the game, early access starts out with four. While that doesn't seem like a lot, context is key here. Every district has multiple blocks of various sizes, with up to around 20 and a couple of them with huge block sizes. It took me 30 minutes to design a five plot block with I think maybe two or 3,000 square meters, and there is a 95 plot block in one of these districts. Of course, you can modify the number of plots, but 20,000 square meters of buildings is massive. So don't be thinking that four blocks is too few. There's a ton to do inside of those blocks, including modifying a few landmarks with some of those pre-designed styles. Next up, building designs. On release, there are 50 different designs. There are multiple variations of the same basic concept, of course, but they are all still unique, ranging again in a wide array of design styles based on PPP index, school type, and even the years in which they were first designed. The last big feature is the city view, which is currently incomplete, but still completely functional. In the city view, you can get a look at the entire city, which is always up to date with your creations, and allows various filters to see what your city looks like in different times of day, different times of the year, even a few weather conditions at the moment. This feature is a great way to get some cool shots of your city, and to get an idea on how some design styles might look under these different conditions. The city view will be something much more interesting and engaging in the future, but even at the moment, it's pretty cool. These three big features make up early access at the moment, combined with your two tools. Again, it doesn't seem like a lot of content, but once you really dig into it, there's actually a very solid amount of material to work with, and it's honestly more than what a lot of early access games entail, so there's a lot of positive in my mind. It's at this point in the review that I have to address the elephant in the room. So many people in the community were looking forward to this game when it was the wider scoped economic city builder architecture game. And I've seen loads of comments on my video and others on how just having a designer tool set will get boring very quickly. This brings up what I believe to be the biggest shortcoming of the game, the lack of imperative, also known as the challenge or the end goal. The lack of an imperative is indeed something to consider when wanting to purchase this game. There is truly no end to this thing. No victory conditions, no other firms gobbling up blocks or districts. There is again no concept of money, no building limitation. Happiness and wealth are not factors. For most of the gaming community, especially the strategy genre, this is a creative killer. It's like back in school when a teacher would say, here, write an essay on anything you want to there's no wrong subject i personally despised those as i had no parameters to base any of my ideas off of it's the same concept here there are zero boundaries to your designs and so your choices are in a way meaningless this tumbles down into a lack of creativity and a why play it if it doesn't mean anything mentality it's a big risk that Anoto games has taken with the direction of this game and the chance of losing interest from boredom is very, very real. But there are some positives to the lack of imperative, if you're willing to see it. The biggest is simply that there is a good chunk of the gaming world that would just like to create for creating sake. Sometimes, after a rough week or a really stressful day, it's just nice to play something without a set game-bound goal in mind. This can be someone's zen garden with no pressure to create something quickly or efficiently, just take their time and relax while crafting something they personally enjoyed creating. Community sharing is another huge piece. If you are part of any gaming community on about any platform, people create some incredibly amazing pieces of gaming art. The types of cities people show off on the City Skyline subreddit are truly mind-blowing to me. 
And so there's the aspect of building something that you are proud of and sharing it with other people. And it doesn't just have to be up to the player or their friends or just the community to create their own goals. Inodo games themselves can push out their own community challenges that aren't coded into the game, which is something that they desperately need to do and I hope that they follow through with. Heavy interaction with the player base I believe is absolutely key to keep the community involved and give incentives to test the boundaries of their own creations. So yes, the lack of imperative will no doubt kill the buzz for several potential players, but if Inodo Games markets the game correctly, while also finding ways to keep that community involvement, I think it will be a great success. Finally, I want to briefly go over the future roadmap for the Architect Paris, as anyone who buys into Early Access 100% needs to know where the game is going to go before committing their money. The roadmap currently in the game extends only through June of this year, and it seems pretty ambitious. Each month, Inodo Games will release at least 3 new districts and 10 new designs, meaning that by July of 2021, we will have 14 more districts to play with and 40 more designs, bringing the total to 18 districts and 90 different and unique building designs. The first three months post-release will also see a major new feature appear to enhance gameplay. Live simulation will bring the city to life with pedestrians, vehicles, and boats being the main focus. Customization modding and photo mode coming in April, with the ability to share your block designs and an as-yet-to-be-disclosed urban planner tool coming in May. So lots of new content is on its way to slowly but surely fill in the grand city that is Paris, both in designs and the new features to enhance gameplay. I sincerely hope that Inoda Games is able to deliver on this roadmap as it will go miles towards building trust and hope in the community. So the big moment has finally arrived. Should you buy the Architect Paris or not? Before I answer that, I do want to emphasize that this is an early access game. There will be bugs, crashes and features that might be funky or just features that don't work at all. And should you buy this game in early access, you are in essence signing up to be a tester for however long they remain in EA before going full release. It's always something I want every person to think about before committing to it. On to my actual answer, depends on what kind of player you are. If you are looking for any sort of objective-based gameplay, that imperative I talked about, and you haven't figured it out by now, then no, this is not your game. You will quite simply not be fulfilled here, unless you maybe enjoy that community aspect I hope Inoto Games builds. However, if you are looking for a game where you are free to design literally however you like, themed or chaos, futuristic or modern or even old school, if you're looking for a game that has very few limits to your creativity and you just want something that you can play at your own pace and really craft something that is unique to you and your own personality, then yes, this is indeed your game. The Architect Paris is a gorgeous city design game and I am impressed at the scale in which this game has currently and what it is aiming for by the end of development. The creative aspect is something that Inodo Games has nailed down fantastically and I honestly cannot wait to see what new features and buildings they have in store and what the modding community comes up with once that opens up. They have an ambitious game on their hands and I hope that the Architect Paris delivers so we can see this single game become the first in a franchise. That will wrap up my review on the Architect Paris. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to comment and give it a thumbs up. It helps the video be seen to the masses. Let me know what you think about the game. Will you give it a try or is this one a pass for you? Lastly, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this type of content. And don't forget to check out my Twitch channel where I'll be live playing this game for a stint on release day, which might be today for some of you early birds. Thank you very much for watching. This is Havoc and I will see you in the next video.